the comparison test again. Well, here's something that happens. Well, maybe you're analyzing a couple series and the first thing that you do is try to apply the uh, limit test and you find that in both cases, the limit of the nth term is zero. So at least these series aren't diverging for an obvious reason, like the limit of the nth term is non-zero. So you've got two series that may or may not converge. But even though the limit of a sub n is zero and the limit of b sub n is zero, it could be that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n might be some number l, which is positive. What does that really mean? Well, one way to think about that is that it's sort of saying something like this. It's saying that a sub n, b sub n are almost multiples of each other. Like a sub n is almost a multiple of b sub n, at least when n is really big. I can be more precise with epsilons. So let's set epsilon uh, equal to L in this case. Epsilon's gotta be a positive number, but I'm assuming that my limit L is positive. So let's set epsilon equal to L. Then the definition of limit says what? It says that there's some big N so that whenever little n is greater than or equal to big N, the distance between the thing I'm taking the limit of, a sub n over b sub n, and my limit L is less than epsilon. And in this case, right, epsilon is L. Now that lets me compare a sub n and b sub n. Well, how so? Let me make this assumption that the a sub n's and the b sub n's are non-negative. I'm gonna want that because I'm gonna apply the comparison test in a moment. So I can simplify this a bit. Instead of making this claim, I can just get rid of the absolute value bars. It's still true, right? a sub n over b sub n minus L is less than L can add L to both sides of that inequality. And I get this, that a sub n over b sub n is less than 2L. And now I can multiply both sides by b sub n. And that's OK, because b sub n is non-negative, so it doesn't change the direction of this inequality. And that tells me that, at least for large values of little n, a sub n is less than 2L b sub n. Now all these pieces are really setting up a comparison test. How is that going to work? I gotta remember this is only true for large n, but that's okay. Well, suppose that I knew that this series, the sum little n goes from one to infinity of b sub n converged. Well, then I would know that this series, the sum little n goes from one to infinity of two L b sub n also converges, right? I can multiply a convergent series just by some number. But now I'm in a position to apply the comparison test. Granted, this statement's only true for large values of little n, but that's okay, right? Because convergence only depends on the tail. So this statement then implies that this series, the sum of the a sub n's, converges because this is bigger than a sub n. I mean, at least for large values of little n. So I'm getting a theorem that's telling me if I've got two series of non-negative terms and this series converges, then this series converges, provided that this is true. Let me summarize that. So if I've got a sub n's are all non-negative, b sub n's are all non-negative, the sum of the b sub n's converges, and this limit statement that the limit of the ratios between the a sub n's and the b sub n is some finite value l, which is positive, then I can conclude that this series, the sum of the a sub n's, n goes from one to infinity, converges as well. Now let me exchange the roles of a and b. So I'd like to be able to start with the assumption that the series of the a sub n's converges, and then conclude that the series of the b sub n's converges. But actually that's the exact same statement, right? Watch this. If I just replace this limit with this limit, now I'm in the exact same situation, except now b sub n's and a sub n's roles are exchanged, right? And that means that if I know that this series converges, then I know that this series converges as well. Now I'll put it all together. Well, since the convergence of a sub n implies the convergence of b sub n, and the convergence of b sub n implies the convergence of a sub n in the presence of this limit statement, equivalently this limit statement, 
I can simplify this a bit. I can say that if I've got two sequences of numbers, a sub n and b sub n, both non-negative, and this limit exists and is equal to some number bigger than zero, then this series converges if and only if this series converges. The sum of the b sub n's converges if and only if the sum of the a sub n's converges. This convergence test has a name. This is called the limit comparison test. And it's one of the situations when two series, in this case, the sum of the b sub n's and the sum of the a sub n's, share the same fate. They either both converge or they both diverge.